What's up guys, it's Tejan here with Ground Zero Mobility Training and today I'm bringing you guys a mini pod from the comfort of my living room <laughs> and we're going to talk about two things today. And the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be is running seven days a week actually going to be bad for you um, or is it good for you? Um, and then two, we're going to be talking about the 80-20 rule in regards to zone two training <clears throat> and you know what that kind of looks like and just talking about different things that um, I've seen on social media, um, both those, both of these things that I'm talking about, they come from social media, honestly. I um, mean, a lot of the stuff that I talk about from these mini pods will be, I, I think instead of commenting on posts and things like that and trying to have conversations, it's just not necessarily the thing to do. So instead of doing that, I think I'm just going to bring you guys some mini pods because I know that social media and things like that can be very confusing. Um, you know, seeing all the different takes on things like, is this bad? Is this good? What should I do? Um, especially if you're a new runner, you know what I mean? Or just someone who's trying to learn more about running just because you want to start getting into it, right? What's the best course of action for certain things, right? So that's what a lot of these mini pods will be about. Just kind of different things that I see and uh, different topics that I think need a little bit of clarification. And I think will be beneficial to discuss, right? So let's get right into it, guys. Running seven days a week, is this actually bad for you, right? The answer is no. Now, I see a post and it said, even if you run one mile every day, so it doesn't even matter. If it's, even if it's just one mile every day, that's still bad for you because your body doesn't have time to recover. Let's think about this for a second, right? Let's take that to a, not even extreme because that's what the post said. So if you run one day a week, one or one mile, seven days a week. One mile, max a mile will take most people to run. I would say let let's let's max it out at fifteen minutes, right? Fifteen minutes for one mile. Not even close to an hour, right? Not even close. <laughs> so out of twenty three plus hours, twenty three or more, right? Hours of the day, your body has all that time to recover. So why would doing that one mile every day be a bad thing, right? Me personally, I think running seven days a week can be beneficial, personally, I do. I think the mile a day thing could be a great thing, right? Maybe you're just starting to get into running, right? Maybe for you, running one mile every single day is like, it makes you feel real good. You know, A, you feel real good about yourself. B, body feels great doing it, right? C, you're starting to become more disciplined. It's you getting out the door every day and getting a run in. So it kind of teaches you that, right? That that's a very beneficial. Uh, whew, that's in all words there. That's a very beneficial thing, right? And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, as a collegiate athlete myself, I ran seven days a week, and I got up to 80 miles, like was the highest I ever got on seven days a week. Of course, did I build to running up to seven or it's running seven miles a day, doing 80 miles a week? Of course. I didn't just come in freshman year and start running seven days a week. But we did build to that. And for me, it was beneficial. I did have teammates, though, who truly felt like they would run. They would be better if they ran six days a week and maybe had that one day to cross train. Right. So that's what my coach did. Is that a bad thing? Absolutely not. In fact, that's that's very important to understand is what you guys want to do and whatever you guys think is the most beneficial thing for you and whatever you enjoy is what you should do in regards to training right i know that like you know it's not a take away from coaching and things like that like of course that's important but that doesn't mean that like the coach completely overrules any and any and everything you want to do it's a team effort right so for example if I have an athlete come to me, hey, I want to run five days a week. I'm training for some races later on, let's just say this summer, and I want to start training right now and build up to being able to run a, a pretty good half marathon time, let's just say, right? But I only want to run five days a week. I don't want to run seven. I'm not going to look that person in their face and say, okay, well, no, you have to run seven days a week or, you, or, or we can't work together. You know what I mean? No. How can I figure out the best way to help said individual get to where they want to be on five days a week because it is very possible to do whatever it is you want to do and get to where you want to be and run a fast half marathon, half marathon time on five days a week training it is very possible so 
that's the important thing, guys. Like, is seven days a week beneficial? Yes, but it's only beneficial if you truly want to do it. If if you despise it and when you're doing it, you're not you're not enjoying running seven days a week, then you shouldn't do it at all. Don't force it. This idea that we have to, and I think the grind culture is kind of, it's a it's a great thing. Like, don't get me wrong. I always say your grind is your grind. I love the grind. But it's like it's been taken to an extreme. Um, and I feel like that's just what we have nowadays is like extreme of things. Because now people think of that, like the grind culture is like, well, you hate it, doesn't matter. You got to do it anyway. It's like, I, yes, do things that are uncomfortable. Do things that you genuinely hate doing on a regular basis for what? That just doesn't even seem like an enjoyable life at all. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, you don't have to do it. But also understand that your body does have time to recover throughout these days. And it will recover throughout the many hours that you're not running. You know, so long as you're sleeping well, so long as you're, you know, feeling well and things like that, you're fine. And it's not nothing that you have to overthink. You know, you're fine. You'll be perfectly A-OK. So, no running seven days a week is not bad for you at all. Now let's discuss this 80-20 rule. So this 80-20 rule is basically talking about zone two. And with zone two, this is basically where it is believed that most runners should run a lot of their runs at. So 80% of your runs should be at zone two, which has been shown from things that I've seen as to be a, a very slow pace. Super slow, should be able to talk pretty much, right? And then 20% of your runs should be workouts or, you know, faster runs and things like that. So while I don't think the 80-20 rule is a bad thing, I think the way that zone two is described is a little um, flawed a little bit um, because it isn't a lollygag, right? Zone two is not you going out on a run and going like recovery pace, if that makes sense. It's not recovery pace. Zone two, if you, I like to think about zone two on a scale, so like an RPE scale, rate of perceived exertion. So basically that's just how much effort I am putting toward a task, right? So on a scale of one to 10, one being not much effort at all, like barely any effort, if not none, right? Almost to 10 being max effort, right? You wanna be at around, a, I would say a range from four to six. Four may be like a hair low, but it's okay. I think thinking about it from a range of four to six is really good. That's where you want to be. So, you know, we don't want the extreme on this end where we're not doing, or it's too slow of a run, or we don't want the extreme where it's too quick, right? It's too hard, right? It's exerting yourself too much. So we want that middle ground, right? That's what we want with zone two. So most of your runs should be in that middle ground area. And then the other runs can be is where we start to get into those workouts and things like that, maybe pushing yourself a little more because you do have to push yourself, guys. When we, when you are building mileage, yes, when you are first starting, it is very important just get out, get the miles in. Don't worry about pace. Run for time, things like that. Like These are all important um, things that you can do to help build yourself up mileage-wise. But you do have to go out some of those runs and push yourself, right? Because over time, you're gonna have that baseline, right? Cause that's what you want, you're building that baseline, but when you're not pushing yourself at all, you're not gonna improve, right? We have this concept of progressive overload to some degree, right? You have to progress to get better. So you have to have some runs where you are pushing yourself, right? Stressing that system so that that system is able to adapt and we are able to improve our aerobic capacity, right? Which is just basically our VO2 max, which is just basically how much we are able to utilize that oxygen that we're intaking, transport it, or let me get this right. <laughs> it's how much oxygen we're able to take in, utilize, and then transport, right? That's basically what it is. So we want to be able to improve on all these things. Running economy is going to also improve when we're pushing ourselves and things like that too. Um, you're going to become more efficient, right? It's going to be easier to run these paces. It's going to be less effort, right? So these are all important concepts to understand when it comes to to training. But the eighty twenty rule isn't a bad way to, to uh, or a bad thing to use. If you like using it and it works great, just understand that zone two is in that middle ground, right? So it's not a it's not super slow, it's not super fast. Um, but I, me personally, like I I like to think about just having certain days. So you'll have your your recovery days, you'll have your your maintenance days. So those days are 
days where he just kind of going out, getting a run in, just, you know, not thinking about going too slow or too fast. So you can talk like more of those zone two days if you want to think about it that way. Um, steady day, so you have a, a good uh, a, a run where it's a steady pace, but it's not too slow, not too fast. Or it may be a little on the quicker end, but like it's not killing you, if that makes sense. You have your progressive runs, so that's where you're starting off at a, at, at a slower pace, or you can start off at a little decent pace and then kind of progress through it, get faster, um, just to kind of push yourself, right? And then, of course, we have your workouts, which can be a variety of different things. Bart legs, tempos, um, stuff like that, right? Um, so that's the big thing, guys. It's just understanding that training and all these things, we don't have to overcomplicate things. And we don't have to overstress about things, right? If you're a new runner, just think about getting out the door and building and building and getting the mileage in. And then think, all right, I may have a day this week where I want to push myself a little bit, right? And then if you're really trying to build into like racing and things like that, like, you know, the 10 road races, the 5K, 10Ks, half marathons, even up to marathons, stressing that system more is going to be extremely beneficial for you. How do we stress the system? We work harder, right? That's the most important thing to understand, right? These concepts are pretty simple and there's no need to really overcomplicate things. I think just finding a coach that understands that is extremely important, guys. Very, very important. Um, so yeah, that's our mini pod for the day. I hope that was some beneficial information for you guys. If you guys want more running tips, tricks, uh, or just kind of Honestly, any tips and tricks on strength and flexibility, for the most part, you can go ahead and follow me on my Instagram. That's Tejon underscore Nelson. Um, I don't know Drake's Instagram, but I am going to link Drake's Instagram under here as well. Um, that'll be in that bio. Just because Drake has a lot of great content that it may not be specifically for runners, but it is very beneficial for runners to look at and to start to utilize and things like that. Um, really, really great stuff on like training concepts and just a bunch of different stuff I think could be beneficial for runners as well, right? So that's our mini pod for the day, guys. It was great talking to you, and we will be back next week with another one.